Ashton Harris's Josephine No. 17 and Juliana Huxtable's Untitled in the Rage, Nibiru Cataclysm, each artist forms a representational meditation on Black womanhood. By considering the conversation between these works, we can understand the ways their approaches converge and diverge. In Harris's 2002 performative monochrome self-portrait, Josephine No. 17, the artist poses as 20th century Black performer, activist, and spy Josephine Baker, engaging in a visual call across time about Black womanhood. Harris's face is turned to the side, his hair relaxed and up in a bun, his body adorned in Baker's signature banana girdle, and little else besides an armband, bracelets, and handcuffs, is held stiffly forwards in a lean to the right of the frame. Using the performativity of his self-portrait, Harris produces a synergy, a mise-en-scene on his body, between modes of feminine expression, such as his earring and low bun, floating racial signifiers, such as relaxed hair signifying whiteness, and racialization as a tool of control and capitalist exploitation through slavery, seen in his handcuffs and tense pose. Embodying Josephine Baker, an activist, spy, and racialized sex symbol, Harris represents strength poise, individuality, free-spiritedness, willfulness, power, and resilience within a painful, white, and phallic male system of aesthetic and bodily domination. With the glamorous accentuation of his face by the circle of his earring, Harris frames the beauty and poise of his Josephine's face in stark contrast to his body's literal entrapment in controlling and sexualizing regalia. His hair, though relaxed into a texture signifying whiteness, is caught in the light as if lit from behind, giving Harris's Josephine a halo and reinscribing the Afro texture of her hair as a wholly black racial signifier. The motion of Harris's body, which is difficult to distinguish from the camera's defocus, is most apparent in his hands, where in a blur, the chain of his handcuffs almost disappears. Their position rhythmically draws the viewer to the shape between them. The central yellow fruit is a phallic protrusion but, repeated as it is in the pattern of the girdle, it becomes somewhat innocuous and loses its phallic singularity. In its original place upon the erotically exploited performing body of Josephine Baker, the skirt of yellow fruits as phallus imposes upon black womanhood a castrating position. Yet here, the downward angle of the phallus speaks to a passivity. Harris's representation sets up an unsettled sexual positioning, used as needed to bind and exploit his black body in history. And yet here also, in his bold femininity, the ambivalence of phallic and feminine embodiment may be read as a performance of productive gender nonconformity. This ambivalence of sex undoes gender binarism as a prescriptive, controlling, hierarchalizing system. Harris's elegance, poise, and strength channel the power and heroism of Josephine Baker, a bisexual black woman, a champion of civil rights, and a spy against the Nazis. Harris refuses to capture Baker in all her brilliance, perhaps because it is not possible from his position. Rather, he venerates her while he situates his own body in the contradictions and markings of white supremacist, capitalist, gender binarist patriarchy. Juliana Huxtable's artistic practice enters into a conversation with Harris in the shared medium of self-portrait photography. While both Harris and Huxtable create posed compositions with their own body, Harris works in monochrome film while Huxtable's work is in digital and in color. The flexibility of Huxtable's media allows her to articulate and imagine representations of black womanhood that Harris intentionally forecloses through his presence in his pieces. Huxtable engages in a nuanced form of self-making in her self-portrait photo, Untitled in the Rage, Nibiru Cataclysm. While the title references a modern myth of interplanetary collision, the form as self-portrait creates its own collision between the subject and the gaze of photography. The scene, reminiscent of a beach, shows an overlapping between water and land, while Huxtable embodies her own encounter with these natural forces as she interfaces with them by coloring her body and surroundings with an analogous color harmony. Huxtable thus embodies several encounters and becomes the site of synthesis between land, sea, and sky, implying her universal presence as if a pantheistic goddess. 
The compositional placement of her hair splits her form into multiple dimensions, emphasizing the depths of her three-quarters pose, but simultaneously also dividing and flattening the left side of her body into a profile-like composition of angles. Her bodily presence in the photo is thus marked as a synthetic, representational version of herself. She thus compositionally asserts that she is not really before the viewer in the photograph. Rather, she is elsewhere, perhaps very far away, on another planet, and only appears as a legible subject of the photo through multiple tricks of the eye and camera. She is nothing other, but rather herself. Indeed, her gaze is away from us, but not in a self-debilitating way. There is a power in her eyes aversion, a singularity, a crucial distance. Like Harris, the figure of black womanhood represented in Huxtable's piece is venerated. But while Harris performs his own relationship to this subject as ambivalent, Huxtable projects her femininity, her black trans femininity, with supernatural grace. While black trans feminine existence and empowerment both threatens the hegemonic order of race, gender, and capital, and is continually the target of its force, Huxtable's articulation and self-portrait both gives black trans femininity powerful presence and enshrines its transcendence.